So Peter, over to you. Thanks, Louise. Could you just see if you could let me share my screen just briefly? Um, Absolutely. If it, if I'm, I'm going to make you co-host, uh, Peter, which means that, that you will then be able to share the screen. So let me just do this quickly. Uh, yeah, um, look, um, it's hard to follow people in this program because they take all your good material. Um, so th there's absolutely nothing that anybody said that doesn't resonate with my experience. I think, you know, I was partnered with Andre in um, Lavender Hill, Nirvana Primary, and uh, it's, <laughs> it's difficult to go there. I mean, I would hazard a guess one in five times that I was scheduled to go there, uh, Andre would phone and say, please do not attend. You know, it is not safe for you to come. I think the scary part of that is it's less than five kilometers from my office. So, you know, you probably 50% of the time I was there, there were gunshots going off. Um, Andre, the one day phoned me quite a wreck. He was quite a wreck. Um, he had let the kids out and they're right on one of the bigger roads in Lavender Hill and the gangsters started shooting in the road and Andre was in the road dragging the children back into the school. This was a school that didn't have a fence. Um, so, you know, I think I agree with it with everything that everybody said and again, I've taken a lot more out of this program which is a little selfish, then I've given in, but it's just the nature of the program. It, you, you know, I went to Rondebosch Boys High School. It was a Model C government school, but comparatively to a Levana or a Hillwood or many of the other schools, you know, you can't even put them on the same rating scale. It's, it's very difficult to have a school with five science laboratories being on the same scale as Levana, that's a temporary school built in 1976. And it's still a temporary school to this day. It is still a prefab school from 1976. So I'm going to try and share my screen one more time. Otherwise, I'll... You should be able to share it now, Peter. Yeah. So look, uh, and really, um, you know, Louise knows this very well from me that um, I, um, I didn't want to get involved in anything that... I, I didn't leverage my best skills and my day-to-day -day job is raising funding uh, for a renewable energy plant. So a, a small renewable energy plant costs somewhere between two and three billion rand. And that's my job to travel the world and raise funding, Japan, Norway, South Africa, obviously the UK to raise funding. And it's not about money and it's not about my money. I've personally put in very little. But it was leveraging. Everybody w wants to assist. And I mean, maybe you can see before I got involved with Andre and Andre's the catalyst, you can see the difference, I think, I hope. Um, some of the programs that we laid out, uh, a school hall was built, no hall since 1976. The building in the top left corner was the first library in Lavender Hill. The first library in Lavender Hill. Just think about that. Um, there on the right hand side you can see some temporary classrooms and down at the bottom you can see a rugby field. But more interestingly, uh, one of the two girls in the middle uh, has been facilitated and has received the Accenture bursary for all studies ever, including accommodation um, until PhD level. And we, we can all talk about those great teachers in our lives. I mean, if you listen to any of the stories about people like Herschel Yankees and Sia Khaleesi, there's always a great teacher somewhere along that line. And I believe all the principles that PFP is engaged with are and can be that, that great teacher to individuals and make the big difference. And often they don't even know it themselves. So... I just wanted to share a, share that picture because I think it's just a great re representation what great people like Andre, in my case, can do, but often um, struggle because they don't have the network. So my network is very much a white privileged network. Went to Rondebosch, have many friends at Bishops. My boys were at Bishops. My father-in-law 
is a lifetime vice president of the Bishop's OD Union, was marketer of the year in 1989 for South Africa, ran a successful publishing business. But my network was a very white privileged network. I now have a very diverse and dynamic network. When COVID came along, I was able to fundraise and distribute 300,000 Rand in the first week to people that couldn't feed underprivileged children. That wouldn't have happened without Partners for Possibility. And that wasn't directly through Partners for Possibility. It wasn't through Levana, um, but various um, headmasters, headmistresses, and various um, NGOs that we've been involved with through this program. We were able to facilitate that network and with our funders and get food on the ground for, for people. Uh, I mean, it is sad when you can't um, help. My phone beeps probably once or twice a day um, with requests for assistance. But most of my white privilege network are clueless on how to help. And, you know, Louise has heard this many times, but one of the sad things is the biggest um, negative is people don't want to cross the M5 highway and travel into a township. And, you know, the, the, the safety and the security aspects are played. But when my boys, my boys are young, eight and seven, it's my fourth year as a parent at Bishops. Uh, when my boys walk around Bishops, it is a school that lacks love. And when I say that, there's no physical contact. And please, let's talk about pre-COVID. There's no, there's no love between the teachers, the principal, and the children. At Levana, you cannot walk 10 meters without 10 children coming to hug you. And they get that joy, love, safety out of the school. When I pull up in my car, my car is a... I probably would and my bicycle is probably worth more than my car, a 14 year old Land Rover Freelander. Um, the boys crowd around my car and we talk about cars, you know, and that's just aspirational stuff to, to young, impressionable people. And Andre, as a headmaster, broke that barrier. He's formed numerous um, full bursary programs with other schools where people are now leaving Lavender Hill. And I'm, I'm talking five kilometers, I'm talking 10 kilometers, I'm not talking hundreds, where there's just a much broader acceptance that Lavender Hill is not the, the be all and end all of what one can be if you do that. And, you know, we, we've got a sad story in our office, um, another partner for possibility individual, Ian McDonald. Um, Ian was a partner to the school next door to Levana. Both of them primary schools, both of them a thousand children. Um, Ian, and Ian passed away uh, two and a half years ago now um, while working. Um, but it's just been amazing. Uh, there must be at least 50 people that are active, actively supporting Hillwood um, on a weekly basis, the bursary programs that have been put in place. So it is about networks for me. Um, again, I just want to reiterate, I've got far more out of this and there's not enough money, Bob, from a tax point of view, there's not enough money that you could pay me to be headmaster of Levana. Uh, you start with 20 million in my bank account and I would consider, consider going for the interview. I, I think these people are crazy that are headmasters of these underprivileged schools. They're crazy. And maybe they just do it because they don't know what they're getting into. But when you're dealing with gangsters running through the school, everybody is out to get you. And they don't share with their spouses if they're lucky enough to be married because their spouses will stop them working at these schools. I mean, you walk into Andre's um, office and he's got a child of nine, eight, that's intoxicated. You know, there's gangsters in the school. Children are fully, full, full members of the gangs that tell Andre what to do. You know, and remember, this is a primary school. So we're talking about 12-year-olds, 10-year-olds. So it's a crazy environment, but I do think uh, we've been able to assist. And I think uh, Lavender Hill's been better for it. Um, and I'm a much better person for it. I, for my sins, put up my hand to be on the Bishop's Parents Association, uh, which first meeting's tomorrow, but my number one 
thing is transformation. Bishops has no clue about transformation and I am making it my mission. And if it doesn't improve, I will take my boys out of the school and find another home for them. We can certainly find places for them to be useful and, and of use and in learning, Peter. Thank you so much.